What's going on guys and welcome to the third episode of my new career mode here with Torino and in today's episode we're starting off with deadline day and as you can see we do have a couple of sales as you can probably tell by the title. Uh, this Uruguayan goalkeeper called Salvador Aishazo is on his way to Bohemians for 30 grand. He's 22 years old, 53 overall and I highly doubt he'll ever play for us. So we just get him off the club basically. There's a ton of players that are loaned in at this club, sorry loaned out from this club. Uh, so of course we can't really sell them unless we record them and then sell them like we did with Verdi but if we can sell on some of the fringe players here that have no future to be honest and I'm okay with that also Empoli put in a bit of 1.6 million pounds for this Albanian centre half uh, centre midfield sorry called Basha don't really plan to use the guy his contract's also up at the end of the year so he goes and I'm totally fine with that and that was also how transfer deadline day was end uh, that was all we did we sold two players and there you go but as you can see all of our business got done in the last episode where as you can see as well by the money we spent we spent 37.25 million pounds on a load of new players also got 37 million pounds as well the headline departures were Glick who you saw there for 21 million pounds at Chelsea and also Verdi for 9 million pounds to Barcelona and as transfer deadline day ends and we take a look at the full list of departures and join clubs and uh, departures and signings as well join clubs uh, departures and signings as well uh, obviously keep in mind a few of these players had already left and signed before we came in the likes of Immobile coming in for example and Qualiara uh, sorry Immobile going out and Qualiara coming in for example uh, those happen before we join the club. It just gets listed in there anyway, as that apparently occurs during the first summer transfer window, even though you don't get to uh, to have any say in that because it's already happened in real life. But to be honest, I'm I'm okay with what we've done. And you'll look at the squad here. This is the first squad report of the uh, the new season. Um, uh, if this is your first career mode, then squad reports get shown at the start of every single in-game calendar month. So we just entered this, uh, September. So you'll see this one and... Um, from then on out, you know, in the 1st of October, 1st of November, 1st of December, ETC, we'll keep showing the squad report. And you can see the squad report right here. I'm, I'm okay with what we've done because we brought in a load of good young players with decent potential, or at least I'd hope so. And I know we overspent on the vast majority of them, really. But quite a few of them look really, really decent for the future. And of course, in our first game against Inter Milan, we did win by two goals to nil. We had six players making their debuts, and I thought they all did really, really well. So this Torino side is going to be a project. This Torino side is going to take a while before we're capable of challenging for Serie A titles and Champions League titles as well. Even, you know, Europa League trophy. I don't think we could win it in the first couple of seasons. We we're obviously not in, in, in the Europa League right now. But, um, you know, for the future, for what we're, what, what foundations we're laying in for the future, I, I think we're doing okay. Like, for the first two episodes, you know, making all those signings, seeing Glick depart and obviously selling Verdi as well. I, I think we did the right choices. I thought we made the right choice. I think we did the right choice. I thought we made the right choices in those two departures because I don't imagine Verdi will come back to haunt us for another club. And as for Glick, well, he wanted to leave and £21 million for the guy, I'll take it, even if he's our captain the highest overall. So I know that, you know, quite a few of you may have looked at the first couple episodes and especially that last one and thought, seriously, what on earth are you doing with some of those transfer deals? But personally speaking, this, this career mode, you know, my career modes, for example, don't tend to end after one or two seasons. So these players will still be in the club where you'd, you know, pr presumably think so in three, four or five seasons when we're still running this career mode if we've got enough time to do so so I'm not too fast with what we've done and this guy in particular is having a great start to his Torino career as we take on Sampdoria for the first game of today's episode we take the lead here in the first half and it's another goal for Poloski he came in from Kiev uh, Verona in the summer transfer window for 6.25 million pounds he's already got his third goal for the club what a start he's off to and it's Sampdoria nil Torino one could have been two nil here in the 25th minute but Qualiarella's shot was well saved with a goalkeeper and Sampdoria clear and in the 30th minute a great chance for Sampdoria to equalise but Delhi makes a great save on and Eto's follow-up header is cleared off the line by our new captain Maximovic showing the kind of grit that clearly Glick didn't have as he got, the, uh, he, he got sold to Chelsea for £21 million didn't want to fight for the club Maximovic our new captain clearly does but uh, still Sampdoria nil Torino won it did become 1-1 on the stroke of half time though Valeri gave Sampdoria the equalising goal pretty disappointed to concede that one to be honest they chipped the ball inside Balanta headed the ball away but we couldn't fully deal with it the ball got played inside towards Valeri and as you can see I sort of lost him a little bit with Vaselli, I think it was. And it was a really simple finish past Padelli to make it 1-1. So Diego Valeri does make it Sampdoria 1, Torino 1 going into the break. However, just before the referee would blow for half-time, we had another chance here as Perez gets the ball and goes down the right-hand side. He double step overs around Samuel Eto, keeps on going down this right-hand side, and the Brazilian takes it around all the Sampdoria players that came towards him, swings in across to the centre, or drills in, I should say, and in the centre, Qualiarella gets on the end of it and makes it Sampdoria 1, Torino 2. So Quali 
Ali Ariela gets the goal, makes it 2-1 to Torino, his first goal of the season competitively, and we do retake the lead instantly after conceding the equalising goal. So absolutely delighted about that. That is a complete instant response as we do go into the break now back in front because I thought we were going to go into the break leading by a goal to nil. Then Sampdoria equalised, but then Kylie Arella scores there, makes it 2-1. We're already back in front. So 2-1 going into the break. Seven minutes after the restart, Sampdoria went pretty close here. Samuel Eto's strike was well saved by Pedelli and turned behind for a corner. So still 2-1. Another good chance fell here to Sampdoria in the 64th minute. Samuel Eto on the ball again finds a dare in the centre. He shoots and again, Pedelli makes a really good save. So still Sampdoria 1, Torino 2 as we have the lead. And from that, we also broke as well. Florenzi gets on the ball and finds Gabby Adini. Plays that wide towards Bonassi here. Bonassi on the ball. Fake shots around his man. Waits for the run of Perez. who got the assist for our second goal. He has the pace on Des Sil uh, Silvestri. Takes it round him with a quick little step over. Gets himself inside. Really good chance to drill in the cross. Does, uh, does do so. But Pulaski's strike goes harmlessly wide and behind for a goal kick. So still Sampdoria 1, Torino 2. But another good chance here to make it 3-1. Fell here as he went on a counter-attack here. Martinez plays it through towards Pulaski. Really quick, incisive passing. Pulaski goes through 1-1. One and, one, and it's another really good finish by this guy who already has his fourth goal in Serie A since joining in two games. It's another goal for this guy. And, you know, I'll say it again. We signed him for 6.25 million pounds. He's got a good finishing stat. If he bags us, let's say, 15 goals this season in his debut year, what an investment that could prove to be. Really nice finish. Sampdoria won Torino 3. And Poloski gets his fourth goal in the Serie A in a little under two games. So great finish by the number nine there. We do get our two-goal cushion in this game for the first time. But in the 85th minute, again, Sampdoria tried to get themselves forward but lost the ball. El Kaduri plays it through towards Martinez off the bench here, down the left-hand side, has the pace on his man, chips the ball into the centre, great chance for 4-1, but Gabby Adini is denied by a really good save by Sergio Romero, and Sampdoria get the ball behind for a corner, and from that resulting corner, Perez ends up cross, uh, crossing the ball outside the area towards Poloski, looking for his hat-trick here on the volley, it does go harmlessly over to Bardo, and behind for a goal kick. It was how the game would finish, though, Sampdoria 1, Torino 3, so we do win our second game in the Serie A out of 2, really, really pleased with that, and again, no surprises who was man the match. Poloski once again, absolutely lethal in front of goal. As you can see, I think Sampdoria probably could have got themselves a point from this game, but as I say many times, you know, it's, it's all good having those shots, but you got to score goals. They had nine shots, only scored once. We scored three in our nine shots, so even though the stats were really balanced, I'm not going to deny that, and they could have got themselves a point, they didn't score the goals they needed to, whereas we did, so I'm really pleased with that. And uh, also following out, the ball came to us and basically acknowledged all the work and dedication, you know, they'd seen from me bring to the club, and I was like, mate, we played two games, you know, calm down a little bit, you know, we've had a great start and everything, but let's not get ahead of ourselves right here, even so, it's, uh, it's nice to get that email every now and then, I've just never had it so early when managing a new club, but uh, still, we take on Hellas Verona, 42nd game of today's episode here, the second and final one of today's episode, if this is the first career of mine you've watched, then most episodes, um, sorry, I should tell you that most episodes have two games, uh, some will only have one, particularly those in the transfer windows, um, but some will also have three as well, so it's usually two or three, sometimes one, but yeah, usually usually two or three per episode. We do take on Hellas Verona for the second and final game of today's episode here. And the first chance would fall in the 10th minute as Gabby Adini finds Perez. Perez finds Benassi through towards Florenzi, back towards Benassi, lovely ball through towards Quali Arella, who strikes the ball, but it does go wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So still nil-nil, first chance coming there, but uh, our old striker does put the ball wide at the post. In the 26th minute, though, a good chance for Hellas Verona to take the lead as they get their ball inside and shoot, but again, Pedelli makes a really good save and continues his impressive start to the season with a good stop there. So still nil-nil. In the 32nd minute though, we pass the ball around after we won ourselves a free kick of Balanta finds Banassi here and again passing with this Torino side is going to be the main focus. We're playing a 4-4-2 Diamond Central trying to capitalise on the fact we've got a lot of good passes in this side and after a nice uh, build up here, Florenzi gets on the ball and shoots and also scores his first goal in a Torino shirt. He arrived from Roma for £7 million. A little bit of an overspend but he's only 23 years old. He can play all across the pitch really and that's what I love about the guy. He's so versatile. High, high work rates. Really high stamina, really good player for uh, my type of player, or my type of play style I should say, and that was a, a decent enough finish from Florenzi, although I will say I think the Hellas Verona goalkeeper should have got some gloves on it, but he didn't, and he gets his first goal for the club, and it's Torino 1 uh, Hellas Verona 0. How about this though in the 36th minute as we launch the ball through here, Qualiarella what about this for a touch to take it around Sorensen, absolutely fantastic, plays it through towards Poloski, takes it around Marquez with a step over, then a nice piece of skill to beat Sorensen goes through 1-on-1, -on -one. it's now his fifth goal in three games, and and, you know, he's already a third of the way there. You know, I said that I'm targeting 15 goals in his debut season for this guy. He's already got his fifth. He's already a third of the way there, three games in out of 38 possible league games. What a start to his Torino career this guy's having. And for £6.25 million, 
pounds. He's already looking like he's worth double that. Absolutely brilliant finish by Poloski after a nice couple of uh, skill moves. He's round the last defender. He beat the goalkeeper and it's Torino 2, Hellas Verona 0. In the 74th minute, we had a good chance to make it 3 0 because not much happened after Poloski scored the second goal as Martinez gets on the ball and shoots but puts the ball wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. So he's still 2 0 as he went in search for a third goal here 15 minutes before the end. But to be honest, other than the first couple of chances Hellas Verona had, they didn't really do too much after that. And in the 78th minute here, as Martinez gets played through again down the right hand side, it's a great chance to make it 3 0 as the South American beats Sorensen, gets inside of a reverse step over, and it's a really cool finish as well. This guy, I think, could be a really good impact sub for us. He's got some really decent pace. He can play as a centre forward. He can play up top as well as the lone striker and also out wide too. I think this guy could be a really, really good impact sub for us to utilise the pace, fresh legs on, try and run at the tight defenders. He does that there and does make a Torino free. Hellas Verona nil. So we are going to get ourselves to win in this game. Sadly, though, we would concede for the first time this season as Luca Toni, there's a blast from the past, ends up heading in this free kick. One thing about his Torino side I don't like too much is that we don't have too much height right at the back. Now, obviously, Maximovic isn't small, and Belanta isn't exactly small either, but he's only 5 foot 11. And as you can see, Luca Toni is a very tall striker. And as you can see on the replay, this is kind of funny. Belanta, our new centre back, well, let's just say Toni towered above him to win that header, and it wasn't too hard work for their number nine. So he does make it Torino 3, Hellas Verona 1. We were going to get the win, we knew that, so I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty pleased with that. But to, to lose our clean sheet in the final uh, 10 minutes is really frustrating. But we would get ourselves our free goal cushion back in stoppage time. So nice passing sees Darm and get on the ball and it's the second substitute who does make a Torino 4 Hellas Verona 1 he came on at the same time as Martinez and does get the icing on the cherry on the cake as I like to say to make a Torino 4 Hellas Verona 1 nice couple of step overs there by Quali Arell a good ball inside and a good finish by Damian as well comes off the bench scores his first goal of the season and makes it Torino 4 Hellas Verona 1 and it was how the game would finish as well so really pleased with that win very commanding victory really solid win for us a fully deserved one as well unlike the Sampdoria game this one we thoroughly deserved to win it by a few goals and we did final score Torino 4 Hellas Verona 1 and uh, a really really good solid performance all around but that does end the episode guys so thank you very much for watching the video really hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed the new episode of my new career mode then please do leave likes it's much appreciated and really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of my Torino career mode very soon